What up, my devil? Sensei Tutum here with another video for you. So, got a pretty good one in store for you this week, at least in my opinion. Uh, I was going to originally just talk about this uh, trading competition we did for Femex. Did another one of those. This is the third one, I believe, the Trade Devils have been involved with. First one that I joined in. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be in town for the majority of this one. Uh, but I wanted to join in anyway because I'd missed the other two. Um, and I learned a lot, actually. So I was going to just talk about that competition. I made some good calls. I made, uh, I don't know that I made necessarily bad calls to the group, but I definitely took a couple, two bad trades and I fucked the account up. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but uh, I was really going to talk about that this week, but I, now we've had some significant things happen on the let's just say the big boy charts um and i think that it could definitely affect bitcoin going forward um and potentially gold and silver and i just want to talk about that briefly from a technical standpoint and then uh i will talk about bitcoin price at the end of this what i think it's going to do here you know briefly talk about what i think it's going to do in the near future um so first we'll just go ahead and briefly dive in on this femex competition and then get into the meat of it uh, so the Femex competition, again, third one we've been in, um, first one I've been in, even though I knew I was, you know, I, th I think it was a 10-day competition. I think I was out of town for, I don't know how, actually, it was like two weeks competition. And I was in town for like four four days or something. I don't know. But I uh, did manage to make some good calls on it um, and get up pretty good early before I went away the first time, uh, like 33, 35%. Uh, and we were up in the top 10 as a team, uh, which is really cool, uh, based on ROI. Um, and then I left and I actually, then I came back, um, and I actually made a nice, really nice trade call from the airport. Um, don't want to, I, I want to talk about what I did poorly and not what I did well, but basically this low called that, uh, didn't know it was going to do all this, but you know, called the low buy, um, for everybody. I don't know if anybody got it or not, but you, people usually don't take my advice, which, you know, I don't give it, I don't give, uh, financial advice. So that's good. Um, but, uh, I want to focus in on what I did wrong and what my philosophy was coming into this. This is my first trading competition, right? So, and I always thought, you know, Hey, on a trading competition, I bet you just need to, go really hard and either blow your account up or take it to the moon to win. And while I do think that you need to go hard, I realized that you don't, you should not, well, I didn't probably knew this going into it, but I, fe I felt very pressed and took these two very poor trades because I felt like my time was running out because I had come back from one trip and we were floating around the top 10. I think we were in the top 10. And uh, I really wanted to push us deep into the top 10 so I could go away on my next trip and pretty much miss the rest of the competition without, you know, without worry. Um, but I, I instead blew my shit up. <laughs> and of course, this is, a, you know, I wouldn't do this on a regular account. A few hundred bucks, like, who cares as far as, the you know, whether I lose it or not. I'm not going to enter into a trading tournament without, you know, with money that I can't just blow up especially with the philosophy that i had <laughs> when i told you i had going into it either blow it up or blow it to the moon um and i still do believe that you should do that um but you shouldn't trade any different than you usually do because a you know i felt a lot of the feelings i used to feel back when i was an early trader um where i you know both of these two trades that i'm gonna tell you about um, that really easily could have worked in my favor where I had to do some fancy footwork. And, you know, that happens from time to time. I call it fancy footwork where you take a bad trade, but then you get out and profit. You know, I, you know, usually these days, if I take a bad trade, I can still get out and profit. But I just really don't want to take bad trades. Right. And I don't take very many on regular accounts. And I did take two poor ones. One came out in profit. The other one is the one I liquidated on and really only liquidated because I was grease son of a gun um <laughs> so uh again i don't want to focus on the good things there was plenty of good but i want to focus on the bad and the two trades were the first one was actually taking a reactive trade at the trading degree which is totally anti my style i'm very against that typically but i took that and i think it was in here right i don't know exactly where i entered um, I want to say I entered here and it went with me at first. Um, and then, and I'm looking at the five to one minutes when I'm trading these, right? 
and you know the trade devil's method works on every single time frame one second one minute one hour one week don't give a shit it's the same you can do the same trades you just have to be disciplined and that discipline is really put to the test when you go to these lower time frames one of my favorite time frames ever to trade has always been two minute but it's when you inserted this like time limit and this you know you're going on trips and competition is where you know got out of the discipline and you shouldn't um and this is a great example why anyway so i took what was a terrible trade in the first place because oh it's gonna bounce and it did if it, initially and i'm looking for at that point if it's a five swing down that's an a b c or one two three right so either way i'm expecting to correct all of this well it wasn't quite done yet and it came down and you know it was really disheartening i was looking to cut my losses around here um i was pretty red pretty red but then i realized you know looking at the patterns and knowing the market i knew with a high degree of probability that we were going to bounce and that we were going to bounce to this yellow line so that's where i had set my order when i went to sleep woke up in profit hey i'm awesome when really that was a shithead thing to do take the trade in the first place right but you know was profit green trade next day same thing um i did the same exact thing and i want to say yeah let me see i can't remember exactly where it was yeah it was it was next day same exact thing took the trade here ish and or remember exactly I think it was here I, I I don't remember exactly I thought I took pictures of these and I didn't but let's just assume that it was I took the trade around here and then again it was a shitty trade and before bed I saw again that it was gonna uh, clearly bounce and but I was greedy this time instead of you know where was it? Let's see. and I and I, I know for a fact I was talking about with some other guys that were in that same shitty trade with me and yeah, this is why, especially this one, I did buy it by myself. I don't think many people knew about it. But this one, I definitely uh, was dragging some guys down with me. But it was a shitty trade, and I knew it was going to bounce to this 382 level. But that was just outside of green for me. It would have been slight loss. So I should have set my tar I should have set my my fancy footwork, take profit there. But instead, I set it just above where it would be wherever it would have been basically a break even slightly green trade for me and uh then it i woke up thought i was safe again and i wasn't and then i got liquidated around here and i knew and, and i saw i woke up i wasn't quite liquidated and i knew it was going to bounce again and i'd be and i'd potentially have a chance to be okay if it didn't liquidate me and then it liquidated me and went up so that was lesson learned don't press don't take shitty trades in these trading competitions but it was really fun and i will go out on a limb i'm gonna go out on a limb here I'm going to say we're going to take top 10 in the next one because we're going to trade discipline. And, you know, I don't know that we will, but because if the setups come, they come. And everybody's trading style is different. Setup for me and I might not be a setup for others. So if my setups come, I'm going to say we're going to get top 10. Um, and hopefully I'll have like be able to, be able to focus the entire tra trading competition. So anyway, let's jump to the meat of what I want to talk about today. Um, I don't know if you guys pay attention to the standard traditional markets, um, and this is definitely going to swing back to Bitcoin. So, and I'm going to do a Bitcoin price um, analysis at the end, right? So, stick around for that. But I don't know if you've noticed, we've had some sharp corrections in the market of late. And, you know, stiff rallies. But the reason that's happening is it was foreshadowed, and I've been keeping the members up to date. If there's any that pay attention on this TNX. I'm always watching the TNX, you know, and I've said this in videos before, keep an eye on the TNX, the DXY, gold, and certain other things to just sort of be my gauge on the economy from a technical standpoint. And I could get into a lot of economic discussion here, but I'm a terrible economist and even economists that are good are terrible, right? They, they're, they're, they're like weathermen. Anyway, um, but I want to talk about what this all means from a technical standpoint, and then you can use these technical things to, um, you know, maybe help with your own idea on the markets and things like that. So I always watch the TNX and I was actually expecting, you know, I was expecting this, you know, to be a dead cat bounce to some degree. Why? Well, let's just look. <laughs> 
I mean, what is the trend? What does what are yields doing? What have they been doing? Right? So that ever since we've gotten off the gold standard, just like the DXY, the yields go down because this is what the Fed is doing to essentially manufacture markets. And by lowering the, the base rate and things like that. And of course, these is, you know, the issuers of bonds are considered to be the smartest money, right? The, the, the smart money. And um, when you see a crash like this in uh, the bond, pro, uh, the yields. Oh, by the way, those of you that don't know what yields are, <clears throat> quickly, if I probably already lost you since I started talking about this before I explained this, but yield is just the yield on a bond goes up when interest rate goes up because I'm yielding more return. Um, and of course, if you, if you just, you know, like old school, buy a bond and get paid the coupon, however often it pays, that's your yield, right? Every time it's based on a percentage and the higher the percentage, the higher you yield on a return from just owning that bond. So as the interest rate goes up, the yield goes up. And inversely correlated to that is the bond price because I might buy this 10 year treasury note, the TNX, um, when it's issued, but I can then sell it at any given moment and the price of that fluctuates. Um, and it is inversely correlated the price to the yield because if I buy a 10 year note at the rate down here, when interest rates are here and then rates are going up, the yields are going up, my note is then worth less, right? So the bond market, when you hear about the bond market is bullish, it's because yields are going down. So this is this is positive for the quote unquote bond market. Bonds are worth more now. Um, anyway, uh, that's that's what yields are and sort of why they're important. Again, bonds, the bond, the people that set the bond yields are considered the smart money. Um, so when something like this happens, usually, you know, they're it's foreshadowing potentially for something um, and the markets generally react. As you see, they have. Bitcoin, not not really. Oh, we're back here on the five minute, but if we go out the one hour, I mean, Bitcoin's been, eh, yeah, I'd say Bitcoin was sort of correlating there. So Bitcoin correlated in this case, but I, I don't I don't know how linked they are, and I think that we'll talk about correlation of what the things we're discussing up in the big boy charts today to Bitcoin because I'm gonna make a case for gold here, and it doesn't mean it's definitely gonna happen. But there is a little bit of a recipe, especially with the price of gold lately, the way it looked with it on the last move down. It's it's scary, right? And I hear a lot of eight hundred, eleven hundred dollar calls. But I'm gonna give you a, a recipe that may or may not be cooking in the kitchen. It could really um, cook up some expensive gold. But in any event, um, you you did see traditional markets react, and I do think now that we have broken this key level here that we will probably, whether this continues down more before correcting to the upside, when it does correct, if we get there, I think we reject at this point. Now that might potentially be a good spot for, you know, as you guys know, I think that there's a larger correction coming on the S&P and in the broader equity markets. Um, maybe those will coincide, um, but not exactly what we're looking at here, although it is. So let's go ahead and look if we overlay the SPX price on TNX. And this is, you know, so I'll just briefly show you how, obviously I showed you how we had this drop here, correlated with this drop here. Um, and then of course, you know, they will correlate together and even gold will at times uh, with the TNX. Oh, by the way, gold is, pretty fairly reliably uh negatively correlated with the tnx with the yields as as the yields go down gold pretty reliably goes up and there's we can glean some correlation about between the spx and these tnx but really the 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 main thing to look at is that in sharp declines of the tnx generally you will see sharp declines in the equities as well and using spx as our as our equities gauge right um and then other times they aren't 
nearly as tightly correlated but um, because obviously here tnx is going down um spx is going up uh to go down together here and then as we've rallied together although as we all said back in here although i do i i, I feel like this was still the bear time on the tnx um but this was bear this was bull and then they've both been bull together so they don't they're not always inversely or, or um positively correlate correlated but what's pretty reliable is that when the tnx s falls sharply um usually the spx will follow or at least not be bullish right so sharp fall here this down decline sharp fall here sideways uh sharp fall here sharp fall here um, we go back to financial crisis, um, sharp fall, sharp fall, let's see, sharp fall, sharp fall. Anyway, not super tightly correlated, but there's a fair level of correlation there. Now, if we insert gold onto this, so what we have now, again, is we've broken below key level on the TNX. We have a chart here that is getting long in the tooth, not calling for the top yet. Although, you know, anybody who watches me fairly regularly knows that we're in the area that I had previously called, although <laughs> I did increase that projection higher and we're not there yet. Um, and, you know, I, I think calling tops is very foolish. So again, that was, that was sort of more for fun and because I was requested to call the top on the SPX, but it's still long in the tooth. And my overall view is that it will correct a lot at some point whether whether we get back down to here or just to here or just to here unknown or even now at this point maybe even just to here that would be a relatively large correction we have not come back and tested any levels of significant this whole run of significance we've never had to come back and test any levels yet um and when we do correct i do think we at least break one all right, so that being said, it's long in the tooth here. This one has now broken below key support. What's gold doing? So we saw the sharp, now we saw the sharp decline in gold when the dollar rallied. And we'll talk about the dollar here as well. Um, so this has been quite scary. And this is where all the $800, $1,100 projections have come on gold when this sharp decline happened. Um, and you can't necessarily correlate it with the other two in that regard. But what's important here to me is that it's very strong correlation that when the TNX is in sharp decline at the same time as the SPX, very bullish for gold. Why? I guess that's probably, you know, again, I'm not trying to get into economic talk too much. I'm really sticking to the charts, but they call it a safe haven asset, right? And I guess when they're both declining sharply, people are scared. So good example would be right here. Gold strong, you know, weak, weak, gold strong. Um, let's see, find another one. Um, well, we could even say back in 2019 at the, or the 2020 at the COVID drop, um, now, sometimes they'll all three get really scared together, but see how gold rallied before everything else and was strong all the way again up until I said the bear time ended here, all the way up until the bull started on the TNX. Um, then let's see, sharp drop. Sure, this is SPX. So sharp drop here, sharp drop here, strong up there. Okay, looking for a sharp drop there. It's not really sharp, but gold went sideways. Didn't go super strong up, but inverse correlation. Uh, sharp drop here, sharp, that's gold. So this was up. Uh, looking for, this is sharp, this is sharp. Gold was up. I think I already showed that one. We could go through, we could go through it, but it's pretty damn reliable. Um, let's see, sharp drop there, sharp drop there. Gold rallied hard. Then as this recovers and this recovers, this goes into decline. Um, that was the 2019. So yeah, we could, we could go back in this chart quite a ways and it's very strong. So just talking about that recipe that I mentioned earlier, we've now broken below key support. We've had the sharp decline and look what gold has done. And although this also sharply declined, so it's a very small move on all three, but 
it has held true to what I just showed. Gold has rallied. These two have dropped. Now, that may or may not continue right now. I'm not calling for it at any specific time. I don't quite think it's there yet. I think that we're going to maybe recover, you know, whether this continues down a little bit more. I think we'll get into recover. I think we've got new all-time highs coming on the SPX. So I don't think this is locked in necessarily right away. But these two things are setting up to be dropping together. Now, you want to get super strong. A super strong correlation is if we were to add the DXY. Because gold and the DXY are pretty damn strongly inversely correlated. Um, and again... One of the main reasons I think that we do continue down, like I did think that we would hold this level and at least test this before. Let's uh, get rid of these. I did think we would hold this level and then maybe retest this before rejecting. But again, we've been in such a multi year decline. Trade the trend until it's in, my friends. So now we've broken the level. Now I will bank on this level holding on retest and continue to the downside wherever it may end. Um, but if we go over to the DXY, we see that it hasn't reacted. And the negative pressure on the yields um, is probably going to, you would think, cause printing and devaluing of the dollar. Um, potentially if it were to continue on um but again the dollar even though we've had the rally here lately the dollar has been in pretty start sharp decline let's, here, let's go out to the bottom of since we can't this is only back to 86 but the dollar has been in decline ever since we went off the gold standard so there's no reason to expect that not to necessarily continue now you do see that i do have this up here right so, I mean, we're out here on the one week, right? So this is later, but first we got to come back and test this. So I do think that this is setting up for, if this is a sideways to be ending here to come back down and test this low. So if this is going to move down and if we just to, just to show, we'll go ahead and throw the, we'll throw gold on here. All right, so we're on the weekly. Is this the weekly? This isn't the weekly chart for gold. This is daily. All right, we'll switch this to daily. All right, dollar going down, gold going up. Gold going up, or dollar going up, gold going down. Gold going dollar down, gold up. Dollar sideways, gold down. But I mean, I would say sideways is you don't need to be correlated at that point. Gold sideways, dollar sideways. Uh, dollar down, gold up. Dollar down, gold up. Gold up. Dollar is pretty much down sideways. Gold up sharply. Dollar's actually going up. Little inverse correlation there, but pretty sideways. Um, but if dollar is moving strongly, as it did here, you always, almost always get this. Dollar moves strongly down, gold moves sharply up. Dollar moves sharply up. So dollar sharply up, gold sharply down before we had this recovery here. So just to show you, very strong correlation. So if we can get that little recipe of dollar down, yield down, and stock market down that could it's you know and we don't even necessarily have to have all three of those things maybe stock market continues up because fed go crazy um but we have that dollar down and that yield down that should be very positive for gold um as you see dollars showing divergence dollars showing overbought um so yeah i, I think that we could have a good good little little recipe for gold and and at the same time potentially bitcoin um now bitcoin's a much newer asset so it's harder to get these correlations and it's also been a maturing asset so it's changing greatly we've got this new um institutional interest in it so i don't know if it's going to be treated like the safe haven necessarily 
or the correlations. I'll look more into that. Maybe we can talk about it next week. Um, although, you know, I'll spare you guys. You probably just want to talk hot charts. Um, so, yeah, I think that we could be setting up for a nice little run, potentially, even after the scary move to the downside on gold. Um, we have the recipe in place. and But one way or another, it's very interesting to watch this because... You can you can glean a lot from that. I don't want to get into the economics, but just take this um, and apply your economic thinking to it. But uh, it, we have broken below key support, um, and I do think we will reject on retest if and when it does happen. So there's that. So let's go ahead and just talk about Bitcoin price briefly. All right, Bitcoin price. Um, what a fucking mess. Um, I do think that there's potential reason to believe we have completed our five wave down that I had projected for a flat C. However, action off the low, quite corrective. So we really got to be concerned that it's not a flat C, it's an A or a one <laughs> even, um, might not be, might, you know, might be any number of things. You know, maybe we're getting into some sort of diag in here that's all you know, end up being a diag larger. But, you know, not necessarily important at this point. I think what's important now is that if it is a five wave down, we still need to correct it adequately, which we haven't done yet with say if this is a three wave move so what i do believe is that this is actually um going to get multiple um i feel fairly good about that that this will get multiple a uh, meaning something like this something like that so while overall i'm kind of like mm, super nervous about bitcoin i think that we will you know Potentially, you know, if we break out of this channel and to the downside, that could be that could be bad. Um, but at this moment, I believe that uh, we may have a near term low in um, and we might be targeting back to the 40K region. Uh, as you can see, I have alerts up here, and that's because if we hit these and break them, I had placed them a long time ago, then that that's when we start to feel pretty damn bullish potentially because you get up above all of this um, congestion and then we could potentially basically make this an area of support. Um, but if this isn't a C, you kind of would still expect to get up that high, right? That's right into the area of the 382. Um, but if you get through it and up to here, who knows? It doesn't look like we would at this point. We just need to put in, maybe this gets super sideways uh, to add magnitude to this correction to make it adequate of this. Um, I think all of that is outside of the degree of concern at the moment as traders. Um, you know, maybe, just maybe, this correlates with the gold, you know? Potential for the gold the gold recipe to be going up. Maybe, maybe Bitcoin's involved in that. Um, all right, so... Another droning one that probably probably didn't uh, meet too many uh, meet, meet expectations of too many, but uh, I think it's important to watch these TNX charts, these DXY charts, these you know these major indexes in the equities market because it's if you think you're going to trade Bitcoin, you got to have an idea of the environment in which you're doing it, right? If, if if you're playing soccer or football for the rest of the world that's not American, uh, you know you got to know if it's going to rain. You got to know if there's another team playing on your field. You got to have, you know, awareness of these outside circumstances. And I, you know, every once in a while, I like to draw your attention there. So if anybody liked this one, I'm glad you might get more of it. All right, boys, do it out.